Okay. Last time we started a, t- a series on a teaching on the Israel of God, and and uh, we saw uh, 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 about what Israel represents. That Israel is not just a, n- a nation in the Middle East only, but we saw that it represents much more than that. It talks about sonship. Uh, Israel represents sonship. It's not just a, n- a nation in the Middle East. And we saw that God calls Israel as His firstborn son, right? God calls Israel as His firstborn son, and we also saw last time that uh, in Christ there is no longer a Jew or a Gentile anymore, but we are sons and daughters, new creations in Christ. And we saw how even in the Old Testament, and we we need to understand that the Old Testament is only was only the shadow. of the substance the old testament was only the shadow of the good things to come it wasn't the the image itself but it was only a shadow so even in the old testament we see how uh, how how in, even in the shadow we can see clear clearly the image that was to come even in the old testament we see the image in the shadow we see the image of the things to come the image who is the image the image is jesus himself the image is the gospel so even in the old testament in the shadow we could see the image of the things that were supposed to come right for example the first time we see the word israel in the old testament is the time when jacob was wrestling with that man right that's the first time we see the word israel and we understand through the scriptures that this uh, jacob was wrestling with this man the whole night and uh, you know when the when morning comes this man says leave me leave me i have i have to go and jacob says i will not leave you until you bless me and this man asks jacob that i uh, you know what is your name and he says my name is jacob and he says from now onwards you will no longer be called jacob you will be called israel israel means you have strived with god and with man you are a prince before god and we saw last time that how uh jacob represents our old man right our old nature the adamic nature the sin nature and how israel represents the new creation nature in christ the transformed man and woman in christ a son and a daughter born of god born again filled with the spirit the israel of god right so today let's go further into this teaching because because the things that we are going to study in the days to come uh, i need to i want to lay a proper foundation for us to build on it and in order for us to understand you know uh, the depths of god's heart we need to first have a proper foundation of the basics let's turn our bibles to acts chapter 10 verse 34 acts chapter 10 verse 34 Acts chapter 10 verse 34 and the bible says acts chapter 10 verse 34 then peter opened his mouth and said in truth i perceive that god shows no partiality verse 35 acts 10 verse 35 but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him so god shows no partiality that means god is no God is not a partial God. God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't now in Christ because of the cross. God is not a partial God. God is no respecter of persons. That means he 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 no longer differentiates between a Jew and a Gentile. That means he the Jewish the Jewish people or the Jewish race is no longer special for him anymore. It's not just them only who are special. it is all nations because here in verse 35 says that in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him why verse 36 says the word which god sent uh, to the children of israel preaching peace through jesus christ he is lord of all because of the gospel every nation god is no longer pa- god 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 is no longer respecter of persons because of the gospel because of jesus because of the cross because of his love god is no longer respecter of any nation he is not a partial god the door is open for all nations 
to be accepted by God because of the gospel. That means God is not showing special favoritism for the Jewish people. And because of this wrong understanding that we have, most of our church world is uh, is in a mess. Is in an absolute mess. But we need to understand that because of the cross, there's no special race. There is no special people called Jews and Gentiles anymore. God accepts every nation. He accepts all people, and for Him, everyone is equal now because of the cross. He is no respecter of persons. Verse 37 says, The word you know which was proclaimed through all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Verse 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And verse 39 says, And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. So now the question comes, who killed Jesus? Who killed Jesus? Here it says the Jews are the ones who killed Jesus. And that's a fact. We cannot deny it. Because of their blindness, because of their ignorance, they killed Jesus. That's a fact. But when you see it from God, from the divine perspective, it wasn't the Jews. But it was the plan of God. Right? Because Jesus had to come to his very own as per prophecy and had to be rejected by them. So that the opportunity can be given to the other nations to receive him and for God to accept other nations. So it was the plan and the purpose of God. And rather Jesus also said that no man takes my life away from me. I lay it down by myself, by my own free will. Nobody could kill him. He says, I lay it down by myself. He was God in flesh. Nobody could kill him. So it wasn't the Jews. Who, I mean, the, the, in the natural, the Jews were the ones who killed him. But from the divine perspective, it, it wasn't the Jews. But it was the plan of God. And in, it had to happen in that way. Amen. F more further, we will see next week. This teaching is really, really, I pray that God will open our eyes to this, uh, uh, to this, uh, to, to these truths. So we, many people, you know, some Christians, as a matter of fact, some Christians, they, they have this kind of grudge, they have this kind of anger and animosity against the Jews, against the Jews, because they feel they are the ones who killed Jesus. But not all, right? Not all. Because there are many who followed Jesus as well. The first believers who accepted Jesus were the, were from, were the Jews. Not all. Not all of them killed Jesus. They were believers. I mean, the disciples were the disciples and the apostles of Jesus were Jews. So it wasn't all. So this is what we need to understand that it was according to the plan of God. It had to happen. The death of Jesus, his sacrifice had to happen according to the plan of God. Amen. All right, so we get this thing that God is no longer a partial God, that He's opened all nations through the gospel to be accepted by Him. Every nation who fears Him, who accepts the gospel, fears Him, and works righteousness is accepted by God, and God shows no partiality. You know, it's like a father uh, having his two sons. A good father will not show any partiality, right? He will not say, this son is more special to me than this. Maybe in the natural, some parents may do it, but our God is a good God. <laughs> he doesn't, the Bible says he shows no respect, he is not a respecter of persons, he shows no partiality. So through the gospel, he has opened, uh, he has accepted all nations, those who accept the gospel and who fear him, who works righteousness is accepted by God. Right? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. <coughs> uh, 
Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 the Bible says for the law having a shadow of the things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect so the law we, we see here that the law was a shadow of the good things to come it wasn't the good thing but it was only the shadow that means everything in the Old Testament when God gave the law to Israel, the, uh, Israel, it was just a shadow of the things to come. So, even Israel in the Old Testament, the na Israel was just a shadow of the real Israel who would come. The, is the Israel that we see in the Old Testament, it was just the shadow of the things to come. So we need to understand that the real Israel now is the new creation sons and daughters of God. They are the real Israel. Right? Both the Jew and the Gentile, those who accept Christ, born again, new creations in Christ, they are the real Israel. They are the fulfillment of the prophecy. They are the substance. Let me ask you let, let me ask you one question dear brothers and sisters listening to this teaching The law came through Moses circumcision came through Moses right and a Jew is somebody who is circumcised who has the law who has the covenant who is circumcised he's a Jew right and this covenant and this law was given to the, uh, was given by Moses So now before all the people who were before Moses, all the patriarchs, the saints who walked uh, with God before Moses, they weren't Jews because they were not they were they were not uh, they were not circumcised. They did not have the law. So as per uh, as per uh, the law and circumcision, if you go to see, then they weren't Jews. How about Adam and Eve? They weren't circumcised. They didn't have the law, so they weren't Jews, right? And how about uh, Noah? Noah wasn't circumcised. He didn't have the law. So was he a Jew or a Gentile? <laughs> how about Enoch? He was, on, he, he was not circumcised. He did not have the law. So was he a Jew or a Gentile? But yet God walked with them. They walked with God. God spoke to them. Because these people were the... I believe these people were the picture... Of the New Testament believers right no longer circumcised in the flesh doesn't matter whether you're circumcised in the flesh or not what matters is a new creation in Christ I believe these people people like Noah people like Adam and Eve people like uh, Enoch these people Metzul and all those people Seth. these people were a shadow of what we would experience in the New Testament hallelujah praise God amen Powerful, isn't it? That even in the Old Testament, we see, even in the shadow, we see the 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 the, the you know the, even in the Old Testament, we see we see in the shadow, we see the substance. Okay, let's go to Galatians chapter three, verse twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Galatians chapter number three, verse twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Galatians chapter number. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 and 29 There is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither slave nor free there is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus in Christ Jesus okay so the question is are you in Christ or are you looking things outside of Christ because the moment we start differentiating between a Jew or a Gentile I'm talking about believers, okay? The moment we start differentiating between a Jew or a Gentile, I mean, within the church, even if it is a Jew, if it is a Jew who is a believer, or if it's a Gentile who is a believer, and we start differentiating them, that you are from a, you are from a Jewish background, you are from a Gentile background. That's that's the end. We are no longer functioning in Christ. Then, if we think the Jewish believers are more special than Gentile believers. That's it. We have moved out of Christ. 
because in Christ there is no differentiation anymore. What matters? Because verse twenty six. Read, read, read verse twenty six. What does it say? For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ. Whether a Jew or a Gentile, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ. Verse twenty seven. For as many as you were baptized into Christ, I put on Christ. Verse twenty eight. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. Jesus. Verse twenty nine. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So, if a, if a, if a, if if in the church, if a if a if a Jew is a believer, a believer from a Jewish background, a believer from a Gentile background, like you and me, and mostly in India and all of the nations, we are all from Gentile background, saved by grace and mercy, right? So, we cannot differentiate. We are no longer Jew or Gentile. Our position is we are sons and we are only sons and daughters of God, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And because of faith, in verse according to verse twenty nine, then you are Abraham's seed. It says. So whether we are a Jew or a Gentile, because we believe in Christ, we are Abraham's seed, and here's according to the promise. Hallelujah! What love, what mercy, both for the Jew and the Gentile. Are we going to see that? Don't think that the Jews, because they have the law, God is showing some some kind of favoritism for them, and they, you know, they they are more special to God. No, 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 no. They even they have to receive the mercy of God, the grace of God, because the law cannot save them either. No man is saved through law. Just like a Gentile needs the mercy and the grace of God, needs to turn to Calvary to receive salvation, the Jews also need the same mercy and grace of God. To, they need to turn to Calvary as well to receive salvation. That is the gospel. The gospel is the revelation of the mercy and the grace of God. Right? So we need we need to understand that the Israel of God now the substance the Israel in the substance is actually the church. The born again sons and daughters of God, both Jew and Gentiles, everyone, we are the Israel of God. Number one, I want to share today is uh, Israel in the substance, which is now in the substance or in the new covenant in Christ, is bigger than Israel in the shadow. Why do I say that? Because in the shadow israel is just a nation in the middle east but in the substance israel is much bigger because it's global right because every born again son and daughter of god globally we are the israel so just think about it this substance israel is much bigger than the shadow israel the shadow israel is just in the in in the middle east but the substance israel is much bigger because it's global. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The substance Israel is much bigger because it is global than the shadow Israel. <coughs> so let's just go to Isaiah 49 verse 6. So Isaiah 40. Isaiah 49 verse 6. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49 verse 6. The Bible says in Isaiah 49 verse 6. Indeed he says. Is, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant. To raise up the tribes of Jacob. And to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as light to the Gentiles. That you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. So here we see God saying that is it is is this thing too small thing for you to be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob that is the natural Israel and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. So this is talking about God working in two ways. First he is saying to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved Israel and I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. So here we see even in the Old Testament God giving us that hint that he will 
that he wants to restore Israel, the natural Israel, the Jewish people and also Gentiles. So he wants to send uh, restoration to Israel as well as show his light to the Gentile world. Uh, you know, to to uh, to put his light even upon Israel, the natural, when I say Israel, the Jewish people, the natural Jewish people, I'm talking about, here it is talking about the natural Israel. And also to the Gentile world. So that his salvation comes to the ends of the earth. Both to the Jewish people and to the Gentile people. Right? That's Old Testament. Zechariah 2.11. Let's go to Zechariah 2.11. And if possible, just type it on the screen. Zechariah 2.11. Zechariah 2.11. Yeah, Zechariah 2.11 Zechariah 2.11 The Bible says uh, Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day And they shall become my people And I will dwell in your midst Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you Again, here we see God saying That many nations shall be joined to the Lord So we see God giving another hint That his work is going to touch many nations all nations many nations shall be joined to the lord in that day they shall become my people so god is saying that other nations as well are going to join to him and they will become his people and i will dwell in your midst and his presence is going to be dwelling in our midst and that's what that's the day we are in today then you will know that the lord of hosts has sent me to you so here even in the old testament we are seeing god giving us the hint that he is going to work beyond Israel, the natural Israel. So his plan was not just for the natural Israel, but first in Israel and then globally. What was that? The gospel. First the gospel came to the Jewish people and then it went to the whole world. Amen. So even in the Old Testament, God is giving us hints over here. Uh, a small hint okay so now we need to understand that God though he gave the law in the Old Testament he gave the covenant of circumcision and the law yet uh, it it wasn't something that pleased him it wasn't the circumcision that pleased God right it wasn't uh, the outward circumcision, uh, 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 outward circumcision, or the outward keeping of the law that pleased God. I mean, the outward circumcision didn't please God at all. Let's go to Jeremiah sixteen, verse nineteen. Jeremiah sixteen. Even in the Old Testament, God says God was not happy with just outward circumcision, but no change of heart. Uh, no transformation of heart. Jeremiah 16. Jeremiah 16 verse 19 to 21. Jeremiah 16 19 to 21. O Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentile... Uh, the Gentile shall come to you from the ends of the earth and say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, worthless and unprofitable things. Will a man make gods uh, for himself which are not God? So here we see God saying that the Gentiles, okay, here we see God saying that uh, the Gentiles are going to come to him, that is, the other nations which are non Jewish. Say, the Bible says, Gentiles shall come to you from the ends of the earth and say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, worthlessness and unprofitable things. Will a man uh, make gods for himself which are not gods? So here, God was giving all the hint that other nations are going to turn to him through the gospel, through the cross, and going to be joined to the Lord. Verse 21, Therefore behold, I will... I Therefore behold, verse 21, I, Therefore behold, I will this once cause them to know I will cause them to know my hand and my might and they shall know that my name is the Lord. So God was going to work in even in the Gentile 
nations. He spoke this even in the Old Testament. Okay, point number two. Even in the Old Testament, God spoke about the circumcision of the heart which was much more important to him than the outward circumcision. Even in the Old Testament. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16. The circumcision of the heart. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16. We are going to study this further next week in depth. Sorry, Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse number 16. Where is it? Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16. Deuteronomy 10, verse 16, the Bible says, Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff and be stiff necked no longer. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff necked no longer. So, even in the Old Testament, God is saying, Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. And be stiff neck no longer. So there is something called as a circumcision of the foreskin of our heart. So we need to understand that even the, uh, the it, when God gave the covenant of circumcision, which was to cut the foreskin, it was to show something that is spiritual. He gave in the natural to show something in the spiritual, which was much more important to him than the natural. He says that circumcise the foreskin of your heart, not the outward circumcision. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Transformation of your heart. That was important to God. And what, so, so we see the hint. God giving the hint that what mattered to him most was the circumcision of the foreskin of our heart than the outward circumcision. Right? Romans chapter 2 verse 29. Let's go to Romans chapter 2 verse 29. Let's see what Paul says over here. The Apostle Paul, the Pharisee of the Pharisees, the scholar, touched by Jesus. Romans chapter 2 verse 29. Romans chapter 2 verse 29. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly so maybe Paul, you know, understood this Deuteronomy chapter 10. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 16. And he says in, uh, in, in Romans chapter 2 verse 29, But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. So who is a real Jew? Verse 28. Let's read verse 28 also. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that uh, circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. So those who are circumcised outwardly, they are not the real Jews. Then who is a real Jew? Verse twenty nine. But he is a Jew who is circums who is inwardly circumcised. In the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter. Whose praise is not from men but from God. So who is a real Jew? A real Jew is somebody who is circumcised in the heart, whose heart is transformed. Right? Who lives like true Israel. They are the ones who are real Jews. So who is a real Jew then? A, a real Jew is somebody who is transformed on the inside. Whose heart has been transformed. When does that happen? A Jew who comes to Christ, comes to Calvary, receives the love and the mercy and the forgiveness and the grace of God. He gets circumcised, circumcised on the inside. Even a Gentile, when, he, when, we come to Je when we came to Jesus, when we received him as our Lord and our Savior, we were circumcised inside. Our old man was cut away. We received the new nature of God. And came the Israel of God. They are the real Jews, Paul says. The ones who are circumcised inwardly, who have been transformed uh, in the heart, in the spirit. 
not in the letter not outwardly they are the real jews okay let's go to first corinthians please first corinthians chapter 7 verse 19 so are you understanding to god who are the real israel who are the real jews the ones who have been transformed on the inside first corinthians chapter 7 verse 19 this is what really matters to god nothing more than this not even the political the not 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 seeing everything in a political way this is what really matters to god first corinthians chapter 9 uh, first corinthians uh, chapter 7 verse 19 first corinthians chapter 7 verse 19 the bible says circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing in other words whether you are a jew or whether you are gentile doesn't really matter to god but keeping the commandments of god is what matters right we'll see these things next week more in more depth circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but keeping the commandments of god is what matters what matters to god is to keep his commandments whether you're a jew whether you're a gentile god doesn't care if you're born again if you are you're a son and daughter of god you're keeping his commandments that is what matters to god right okay the third point as we close for the day we see that god rebukes israel even in the old testament god wasn't showing any partiality to, to israel god is a very just god he is a very righteous god he is a very holy god he shows no partiality even in the old testament we see him rebuking israel and that we find in isaiah 42 verse 19 let's go to isaiah 42 verse 19 Isaiah 42 verse number 19 Tell me something Isaiah 42 verse 19 Who Isaiah 42 verse 19 <laughs> Isaiah 42 verse 18 and 19 Hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see verse 19 God calls a deaf God calls blind verse 19 who is blind but my servant or or deaf as my messenger whom i send he is talking here about israel right who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger whom i send who is blind and as he who is perfect and blind is lord's servant seeing many things verse 20 but you do not observe opening the opening the ears but he does not hear so god is rebuking israel over here calling israel as blind and deaf because they were not able to see and understand that's why god was rebuking them right and i believe god still rebukes israel natural israel and he may be grieving that they are not still able to see and they are not still able to hear as i 65 has we close and next week it's going to be much more in depth as a 65 verse 1 i was sought by those who did not ask for me first he is rebuking israel the natural israel right and now look what he is telling israel in isaiah 65 verse 1 they were so stiff necked and so hard hearted that they were not uh, able to see and understand able to hear isaiah 65 verse 1 and now here god is telling israel about the gentile nations he is saying isaiah 65 verse 1 i was sought by those who did not ask for me i was found by those who did not seek me seeking up uh, talking about the gentiles i said here i am here i am to a nation that was not called by my name he is telling this to israel he is rebuking israel was to i have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good according to their own thoughts was 3 a people who provoke me to anger continually to my face who sacrifice in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick let's not read further let's keep till 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 here but my point is that even in the old testament god rebuked israel for their hard heartedness and he is giving the example of the gentiles that look those who did not 
ask for me i was found by them those who did not seek for me i was found by them i said here i am here i am to a nation that was not called by my name so god is saying to the other nations here i am here i am he's giving the opportunity to other nations to a nation that is not called by by his name i have stretched out my hands and verse 2 is rebuking he's looking back at the jewish people and rebuking them and saying i have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good according to their own thoughts so even in the old testament we see when the jews were uh, stiff neck not willing to obey god god turned his attention to the gentiles he turned his attention to the gentiles because his, because they were not listening he turned his attention to the gentiles that is what happened even when the messiah came when christ came because the jews did not listen and rejected him the opportunity god turned to the gentiles and gave them the opportunity for them to come and become the sons and daughters of god through faith become the heirs of abraham amen are you getting this hallelujah isn't that clear praise the lord So next week we will look uh, on this subject more further. May the Lord bless this message to our hearts. Father